Hey folks, in a previous video I alluded to the fact that I had a second Kiyohime in a more naturalistic style and it's this air layer right here. You can actually see if you look down here that the understock died. This was a failed ground layer. Uh, my first year attempting to propagate Japanese maples I tried to do the same basic technique as an air layer except by burying it rather than having an elevated ball of moss. And what ended up happening is it got waterlogged, there wasn't enough oxygen, and it ended up starving the entire tree. The second thing, which I didn't realize when I did it, was that when you do a ground layer, you leave no opportunity for additional shoots to grow out of the bottom mother stalk of the tree. The first year of failure in ground layering, I ended up digging it up, I converted it into an air layer, and then it did try to grow some shoots after being buried for a year. But it was too little too late, and this tree finally gave up the ghost uh, through last fall and winter. Luckily, my air layer did successfully root last summer and fall, and so it is now essentially standing on its own roots. I haven't removed it from the base yet. I'm going to allow it to grow as is, still connected to the woody base, um, until it's developed a nice set of roots in this air layer container. And so as you can see, it's not a straightforward method when you do your air layers. You can be creative. I did originally have a fairly large sized plastic wrapped ball like you see in all the Peter Chan videos. And then once I saw the established roots, I excavated that plastic, I spread the roots out as delicately as I could, and I gave it room to grow in this can here. And so I believe this tree is gonna grow really well through the spring. In contrast to my Sumo Kiyohime that I worked on in a previous video, this one I am not going to pinch it at all. I want to let this tree run as long and as strong as it wants to. Now, with that being said, it's probably only gonna extend two to five nodes at the very most, and we may get one or two runner branches, but this tree is in a very weakened state. We do not wanna slow it down at all. We wanna maximize leaves, get the solar panels going, and get as much root growth into this ball as we can so that we can separate this either at the end of the fall this year or possibly even waiting until next spring. Um, this is a really beautiful tree. Uh, it was grafted nursery stock. Um, but the graft was really ugly. It had a really huge amount of uh, taper, that step down taper that you see sometimes in grafts. And so I ended up air layering it just above that so that we were gonna have this Kiyohime on its very own natural root stock um, eventually once we get it separated. I'm really excited about this tree. It's got some unusual twists and turns to the branching. It's gonna be an awesome tree to have in pair sitting right next to my uh, sumo style Kiyohime. I'm gonna go grab that tree and pull it over here so you guys can see it in comparison. All right, so here is the sumo style Kiyohime, and you can see how much more dense it is, how huge the base is in comparison, and even the leaves, they are just huge compared to these slow growing, very weak, slowed down to the maximum that you're getting on that air layer. This is just a really good example of showing you that contrast between a vigorous tree and a weakened tree. So when a tree is in a weakened state like that, we're never gonna do any of these advanced bonsai techniques. We always wanna get it into a nice, strong state of health and then we can start applying those techniques. I hope you also notice that there's a lot of cuttings down here in this lower spot. These pines, these are not Japanese black pines. These are loblolly pines. They come up everywhere in my property. So unless they're in a planned tray like these Japanese black pines here, I do not trust them. Those are all loblollies, they're gonna have to go. Um, so we've got a bunch of Kiyohime cuttings that I took off of this last year. Some of them push, seem to be pushing leaves. I hope I get a few of them to root. Also got a little atropurpurium seedling back here. So I'm gonna try to do a 360 for y'all so you can see all angles of this Kiyohime. All right, and there's a better angle there if you can see down here. Here's our little Yuletide camellia cutting and it sent a flower last winter. It was really kind of cool. Just this three leaves and a huge flower. But anyway, so possibly a few rooted cuttings here. Another loblolly pine, get out of here. And there we have it. This is our two year, one year ground layered, one additional year air layer. And that is our second Kiyohime. I also uh, put a little video up on my Instagram comparing the leaves. Uh, it could just be the fact that this is now on its own rootstock. It could be the weakness of the tree, but I'm noticing that these leaves are a lot greener early, whereas my other Kiyohime showed a really vivid orange gold color. So I'm definitely seeing some differences in leaf color. I'm wondering if maybe one of them is not a true Kiyohime, um, but 
Only time will tell. We'll continue to watch these. I'll bring you guys in really close as we excavate this. So we scar the base of this trunk so that we can encourage some additional root growth around the perimeter where there's some bare spots. All right, folks, so it's been about two weeks since we had a small break in filming and the tree has continued to leaf out and it is just about finished. There's a few more tips here that are extending, but it is about at the stopping point. We're on slightly the early side, but I knew that as long as we were delicate, we could go in here and do that root work that we need to do. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're establishing roots all the way around the circumference of this air layer so that we can one day build a beautiful and strong nabari. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move in close and I'm gonna bring you with me as we excavate the base of this air layer and we rework the roots. Before we get into that, I would like to do one rotation so you all can see this tree uh, on a 360 view. So let me move that out the way and let's do a quick spin so y'all can observe. And as you can see, this is just a beautiful kiyohime. The leaves are super delicate and small nothing really over an inch in size. And it's got this really unique twisting shape to the main three trunk lines. You can see there's a really big uh, wound here. This is where we removed a trunk that just didn't work with the design. We will have to come back later and clean that up. While we're in this air layering process, we wanna put the majority of energy toward those new roots. Although it's tempting, we are going to hold back on any of those major surgeries on this tree. All right, folks, so let's do one more little spin around here. Oh no, that's a dandelion. We do not want that. And we're gonna get in close here and rework those roots. All right, folks, so I've done my best to get the camera as tight as I can so you can get a really good look at this work we're about to do. So the first step of this is we're gonna remove all of this moss that we've been using to keep the humidity nice and high in this establishing root base. So we're gonna pull that out first. Okay, so you can see right away that we've got some roots showing. Oh. And you can already see a few roots right here that are, I don't even know if we're gonna keep these. These are much higher on the trunk than the base. But let's go ahead and get all this moss out of there so that we can get a complete look at the base of this air layer. We are gonna save this moss. It's gonna go right back on when we're done. While we're in here, we are gonna get rid of any of this moss that's decided to start growing on the trunk itself. We don't wanna allow that to establish itself fully. Let's just pull this back a little bit and see what we can find here. Because I think we have a pretty good camera angle where we're at here. And this does seem to be developing nicely. I gave a presentation the other day and I showed this tree and I noticed while I was, unfortunately while I was moving the tree, the base below the graft was actually rocking around in the soil which tells me that that has most likely fully died off and there's no remaining live roots in that base because of how easily it was able to move around in the soil. I do have the base of this tree wired in, so I don't, I'm not worried that it's gonna fall out, but it is another indication that that base is completely done. So as you can see, there's a lot of sphagnum moss in here it's still sticking around from when I added this soil container on top of the original air layer. We do want to remove some of that, get back in there and see what's going on in this root mass. But we don't want to hurt any of these roots. And that's all we're trying to do here, folks, is clean out a little bit of this moss. If we have too much of this moss in these established roots, it'll keep them moist, and so they won't have that same incentive to grow. Okay, you can see I broke a few of them off there, and that's okay. We don't want to make a habit out of that. These roots all do seem to be spreading off in a fairly lateral orientation, and I don't know that we're going to keep these because they are so high up on the trunk, but because the base of our tree is already dead, 
It doesn't matter if these are in the file mill design, they're still extremely important for the health of this upper tree. We may have to keep these for another season or two while we establish our permanent nabari. So I've just spread those out a tiny bit. Some of these are so well dug in that they're not going to move very well. That's okay. All right, so I'm going to leave that for now. and Let's get around back here to the front to see what's going on under here. So I'm going to have to pull some of this soil out and see if I can get down in there. Soil out. I'm just going to drop this into the pot below. Okay, so here's that root. Great. You see how we were able to find this little root here? There's another one there. These are just twisted up, aren't they? We do not like that. We can slowly pull out all this sphagnum moss. You can see that we have some radial roots down here. They're not perfect, but they are a start. Direct this root out here. are going to be part of our future Nabari. I don't want to disturb those anymore. But I will come in here with my exacto knife that y'all insisted I get. Scar this a little bit. Right, so I'm going to just cut into this cambium tissue here. Can you guys see that right here? You can see that kind of whitish color there. And just in between this gap here where these roots were. Take a little bit of this rooting hormone gel. Like that. And I'm going to apply that liberally to this area here. I'm not going to let that go to waste there. Grab my sphagnum moss. And that. Go down in here so that we can continue encouraging that root growth down in that area. Okay, we still got our new roots oriented where we want them. And we've mossed that up with a little bit of rooting hormone in that spot. So hopefully we get a new root in there. And we can come back in here and backfill that with So that is step one of this root exploration. Get that back in place. Let's rotate this tree and see the other side. All right, so we are going to do the same thing on this back side. Slowly and deliberately start excavating the soil. Now, when you're doing this kind of work, don't forget these. You want to keep these very delicate roots nice and moist. Gonna spray those down as we go, and don't forget the ones on the back side there either. All right, great. Okay, we're starting to get a little bit closer. Okay. Looks like we have a little bit of root started here. That's really nice. Got another nice root there. And even more root here. Can you guys see this root right behind my chopstick here? Yeah, this is a really nice one. At this point, I'm thinking that beggars cannot be choosers. Enormous moss ball, and we've actually exposed a void there. That's very interesting. We definitely need to fill that in with bonsai soil. We can also work on establishing a better angle for all these roots. Get them moving in a more lateral direction. Alright, 
So I'm going to lift that up and I'm going to backfill that with bonsai soil. those roots radially oriented and we've got it filled back in with some bonsai soil. And it definitely seems clear that we need to keep these nurse roots going while we establish that lower nabari. So over here we've got a few nice ones. We've got those oriented laterally. They were pointed almost straight down when we started. So those are going to be great. Let's make sure we're backfilling those bonsai soil. We've got a lot of that sphagnum moss out of there, and that's going to encourage these roots to grow out laterally. Let's get them covered up over here before we move on. some of this sphagnum moss out of there if possible. Let's see if we can get down under there. Oh yeah, nice. Can you guys see that? So we've got one, two, three really nice roots here. And we want to get those if possible. There we go. I want to persuade those to grow out in a nice lateral orientation. So we're kind of pushing that soil down underneath them. Alright, that one broke. That's okay. This stronger one is still doing great. I'll lift it and push that soil back under there. There we go. This other root here is pointing straight out. That's a nice one. So we're not even going to mess with it. So coming through here, you can see there's another nice root. If you can see right at the tip of my chopstick here. And that's already moving in a nice lateral orientation so that will eventually replace this nurse root that we're keeping in place. It was only on this back side of the tree here where we had to do a little bit of scarring and add some Hormex rooting hormone to try to get one more root or two going out in that direction. Overall I think we are at least on our way to establishing fairly nice radial nabari. Work that soil down in there. back in there if we can. All right, so that finishes up our work on this naturalistic Kiyohime air layer. Uh, as you can see, we got down in there and we checked the roots. Uh, we found the one area where there was a really open spot and it needed to add another. So we rescarred that healing site added a little bit of rooting hormone and packed it with sphagnum moss to encourage some additional root growth in that area. Uh, we did do a little bit of examination around the rest of the perimeter and we found that there's actually a fairly decent um, start to a nabari. We've got some small roots growing fairly decently in all, in all directions of the tree. So uh, although this tree is still fairly weak, we do have those two large uh, nurse roots is what I'm calling them, and those are the ones that's, that grew a little bit higher up on the trunk. They're not going to be part of the final design, but for now, as we establish that nabari down at the proper height on that trunk line, those will help feed the tree and keep it nice and strong and growing. We don't want to do anything to weaken those roots. Uh, but we will take another look at this tree next spring, and from there we should be able to start setting this up for bonsai culture. I think what we're going to do is probably move this into a large wooden box. 
So that's going to give this the best opportunity to start really establishing some strong roots through next year's growing season. Let's do another spin around so you can see this tree. I've got a few little guy wires here, like I'm lifting this branch up a little higher. This branch I'm bringing down and around to the side and then another little branch or two here. I'm spreading those out so they have their own space, but really very, very minimal work as we work to establish the root base on this tree. Let's go one more time around here. So thank you again for joining me on another episode of ACRP Bonsai. Please like, subscribe, comment. Uh, all those actions are really gonna help me uh, work the algorithm and get this content out to more viewers. And if you have any ideas or suggestions for future content, let me know. I'd love to explore any technique that has to do with Japanese maple bonsai. Uh, so let me know and uh, I will work that into my future content. We are almost to propagation season. The leaves are starting to harden off already in some of my other trees. And so I'm really excited to put out some more content on rooting cuttings, air layers, and um, all the different ways that we can propagate our Japanese maples. While we were doing the spin around, if you had any ideas about the design and where we might be able to move this tree forward, please let me know. I've had some really good feedback and already a few corrections on some things that I didn't get exactly right on some of my other videos, so I do appreciate that. And please keep the comments coming, and I will do my best to stay on track and put out only the very best uh, information and content for Japanese maple bonsai. Thanks, and have a good week.